All right, once again, this is Keith Whalen from RPI Consultants. Thank you for taking the time to attend our very first webinar this week at HR uh, on Global HR Technical Tools. We are broadcasting live from our Tampa <laughs> Technology Center of Excellence, as we've officially dubbed it. And you see us right now looking excited and fresh. We'll see what we look like by Thursday afternoon. Hopefully you guys visited us for several of these and, uh, and check them out. Uh, we try to make these very content laden and uh, hopefully very useful. Today presenting, we have Mr. Richard Stout. He'll be presenting a lot of the week, loves to be up here. And uh, very excited, Mr. Chip Cunningham. Uh, Chip's been uh, sort of burning the midnight oil here for the last month. Is it three cloud lives in the last four weeks? So he's very excited not to talk about cloud. Chip wants to talk about global HR. So we'll get started in just a second. Uh, two quick housekeeping items. Uh, we will be recording this webinar and posting it online. Once we do, we will uh, forward you a link to that that you can share. Uh, secondly, we encourage questions. Uh, type them into the uh, GoToWebinar module questions or chat, and uh, Bill Getty will communicate in here versus our, uh, via our improv teleprompter. So without further ado, I give you Mr. Richard Stout, Mr. Chip Cunningham. All right, all right. Thanks, Keith. Uh, we're really excited to be presenting today on, uh, on this topic, uh, a topic that uh, for us, we see as uh, sort of the next, next big trend uh, in, the, in the Lawson space. Uh, now that a lot of our community has gotten up to Lawson version 10, uh, the next things you'll be looking at might be global HR. And I'm, I'm happy to say that Global HR uh, running on the, Global HR runs on the Landmark platform. And the Landmark platform is a much newer, modern application platform that's designed from the ground up for extensibility and the, the ability to easily uh, customize the application to really conform it to your business processes uh, in a way that doesn't impact underlying in for code. And we just have a lot more possibilities. And that, that's sort of the things that uh, are getting me excited about this, these types of projects coming up for us. Yep. Uh, today, we're going to walk through uh, some typical HR events uh, that would happen in, in an organization. And along the way, we're going to point out some of the customizations that we've done uh, to, to uh, help wrap our GHR application specifically around our organization's business requirements uh, for these various HR transactions. And we'll be pointing out some of the different uh, technology points uh, that we'll touch on, uh, such as Configuration Console, which is the uh, tool that's used for customizing security, as well as customizing the application, the forms, the business classes uh, within Global HR. Uh, we'll be talking about flows in IPA, and we'll be talking about some front-end customizations uh, with HTML and JavaScript, and of course, um, enhancing the overall solution with business intelligence. Our, so the first, uh, first sort of step in our employee lifecycle, our employee career, of course, is becoming a member of our organization. So, uh, first, let's talk about some, uh, some customizations that we can do in the new hire process. So out of the box, uh, when you hire an employee, um, the HR generalist is going to have access to that hire resource action. Well, at our organization, uh, we have our recruiters do our, do our new hires. How do we change Global HR to allow the recruiter role uh, to, to perform a new hire? Okay, so um, the best way to uh, perform this customization is to use Configuration Console to make security change. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to open up uh, the security um, config console, uh, the security application, change application, and then uh, we're going to add a new security class that contains that higher resource role, and we're going to copy the recruiter um, role over to uh, a new role, and then we're going to add that security class with the customization to the role. Great. Yeah, best practice, of course, is don't try and modify the roles that end in ST. Uh, replicate those roles and make a copy uh, and, and work on your copy. Yep. So um, out, of the, out of the box, uh, higher resource comes with a certain set of fields. 
um, that, that we can update for each employee. Now, um, as part of our uh, employee tracking, um, we'd like to know if an employee has decided to receive their paycheck via ACH. And I want to capture that information right during the new hire process. So how do we, how do we add this non-standard uh, data requirement into our global HR system? Um, so what, what we're going to do is we're going to add uh, user fields. Um, we're going to use we're going to add a user field to extend that employee business class um, that's going to track, uh, it's, we're going to call it ACH flag, it's going to track um, which employees uh, get paid with ACH, which employees get paid with checks, uh, and then we're going to have to add that, once we've got that user field created, we've actually got to add it to the higher resource screen. So Great, and all that's done in Configuration Console. Configuration Console, yeah. Cool. Um, for our, when we hire an employee, uh, uh, our notifications after the uh, employee, after the uh, hire resource action has been uh, approved, the notification will go to the initiator if there are no errors and administrator if there are errors. Now, what would be really helpful for us is if we could let our IT department know of a pending uh, new hire, um, so they, that way they can get prepared with provisioning all the access that that person is going to need to the various systems. Can we add a notification to our new hire process that gives IT a heads up? Yeah, we can. Um, and we're going to do that. Um, the best way to do that is to, to modify that new hire action to include the new notification. Um, we can um, make the email basically say whatever we want it to say and provide any information that the uh, IT staff would need to set up that uh, to uh, set up that notification, and then we're going to add a uh, we're going to add it in our configuration set. And what that allows us to do is to change that email really easily, rather than going out and changing it in all the flows where we use it. We'll use a configuration set. Yeah, configuration set properties are uh, are something that, that I've been advocating for for a while. And uh, in addition to helping you uh, change a, a value such as an email address, uh, if that ever needs to be changed, it helps you. Uh, have a different uh, set of emails coming out of the test environment from yeah. prod, right? So you're not accidentally sending out live notifications from test. Yeah, and it, it does great things for uh, file locations or anything that might change. Um, and a lot of things are dependent upon, you can just set up in that configuration set and change um, really easily from great. there. So now that our employee has been hired into our organization, uh, the next thing that our employee needs to do is enroll in benefits. Um, so out of the box, Infor delivers a pretty standard uh, benefits enrollment screen. Um, you know, not unlike ESS, um, but in Landmark. So. Now, wouldn't it be great if we could add some specific instructions uh, onto the benefits enrollment screens to help our employees make sense of their choices. Can, can I change the wording and, and add some new text to those screens? You can. Um, what Infor has done is given, um, given, given the ability to uh, make changes to some of the uh, web-enabled code, um, and, the, and to, to make those changes, they've given you zip files where all of those uh, where all those uh, HTML files live. And what you do is you, you're going to make change, you're, those changes to that zip file, and then there's a process for uploading it to Landmark um, so that you can see the changes on that. Cool. Um, probably one of my favorite topics is interfaces. Um, so uh, Infor has delivered a HIPAA 834 interface to uh, to be able to interface your benefits information with your provider. Well, that's great, but it, our insurance company uh, requires a couple of changes to the format of the file that's coming out of loss, uh, coming out of Landmark. Uh, how do we modify the delivered 834 interface file? So, the, uh, like most all of uh, the new the new interfaces, it's a it's an IPA. So, in order to modify the HIPAA 834 interface, which most most providers will you know, there will be minor or some major modifications. Um, you will go ahead and uh, download that flow, uh, make your changes to that flow, and rename it and upload it, and then run that flow in place of the, hip, the standard HIP 834. Great. Uh, we have hired a new employee. They, our person has enrolled in benefits. They've been uh, really enjoying their first couple of weeks on the job and are super excited for their first paycheck. 
Uh, how can they take a look at their pay stub? Um, out of the box, uh, employee space doesn't show payroll information. But we'd really like to provide one uh, employee site for all of our staff where they can get all of the related information in one place. Can we do that? Yeah, so uh, Infor has provided uh, for employees, uh, employee space, a uh, to-do menu is what they call it. Mm -hmm. And on the to-do to menu are all the links and um, you know common links that, that people will want coming from their employee, uh, employee portal. Um, and then to, for this particular one, there's a specific one called for paycheck and you would just put the employee self-service or um, uh, URL in that, in that um, value field. Great, so it looks like one cohesive system and we've got single sign-on between those pages so our employees aren't even really exposed to the idea that payroll is housed on a different server. Yep. Um, so we've, we've hired our employee, they've enrolled in benefits, they've seen their pay sub, but uh, it hasn't been all great news because unfortunately our employee has fallen ill uh, and needs to call out sick. So out of the box, um, there is no uh, functionality to allow the, for the epidemic watch that, that you want. But we really want to track uh, when our staff is calling out sick and reporting symptoms or illness. Um, so that way we, we can project if there is an, uh, an epidemic or, or a breakout uh, among our staff community. How can we use our GHR system to track this information? Um, so uh, what we would do here is we would extend the employee, uh, with employee business class with a new business class, um, something that's going to be available from the configuration console in version 11. Um, and then once, once we've got this new business class, we'll provide the data to that business class using forms and, uh, that we've updated and, um, and then report from this business class um, when, and that'll be able to trigger a, a new epidemic. Oh, we've got some questions. So the first question, put the next one on the teleprompter. Uh, when you use the term configuration set, are you referring? When you use the term configuration set, are you referring to the option in Landmark even without GHR? And do you encourage use of for that for other IPA flows? Um, yes, uh, there for each instance of IPA, there's going to be a configuration set. So GHR has its own instance of IPA. Um, you'll also have an, an IPA uh, product line. So each one of those uh, data areas or product line has their own configuration set instance. Um, and absolutely, uh, you, you definitely want to use that configuration set when you're setting up properties that can be changed. I mean, if, if you think, think about it, say you have one, uh, one drive location that about that 10 process flows point to, you change that drive location, mm -hmm. you're going to have to go in each process flow and change that uh, configuration um, when if you had just used a configuration set you could have just changed it in that single configuration set for all 10 of those process yeah. flows. And is that something that users get a manual for? It's a, it's a developer's it's function. It's a developer tool, yeah. And I'll be uh, diving into that in more detail on Thursday afternoon uh, with a uh, technically focused IPA webinar. Uh, our next question is about how the 834 interface uh, was created. The, the 834 interface does not use SQL. Basically, the question is, for interfaces like eight, HIP 834 and IPA, what language uh, is used to write the actual data query? Is it SQL? It's not SQL. It actually uses the landmark query um, to pull that data. Um, so a, a landmark transaction, landmark transaction. pulls the data uh, out of uh, business class. Right, and then it gets put into the uh, format and put to a file. Great. Our um, wrapping up, our, uh, completing the life cycle of our employee's career uh, who's been hired, enrolled in benefits, uh, checked out their pay stub, uh, we, we tracked a, a illness reporting, 
Uh, our employee has been so successful with our organization that uh, now he needs a couple of minions and <laughs> we, need to, we need to open up uh, some new jobs uh, that'll, that'll report to our new employee. And for that, we want to create a job requisition. Um, out of the box, the job requisition is routed from uh, the hiring manager as the first level of approver to uh, approval level one, approval level two, and approval level three. Those are the tasks in, uh, that are associated which e e which with each of the user action approval level. But in our organization, uh, we need approvals to go manager, director, VP first, and then to the HR admin. Uh, can I change around how the approval structure works for create a job rec? You can. Uh, this, is, this would be a customization to the create job rec process flow. Um, and basically, what you do is you just uh, exchange out the tasks that are already there with the tasks that you need um, that you need for each level of approval. Great. So well, we've touched on a lot of different ways uh, that you can customize your GHR applications. Uh, if you've been on GHR for a, a while, uh, hopefully uh, you see, you've gotten some ideas about um, how you can go back and improve uh, some, of the, some of the way your processes are configured to meet, meet your business needs. Um, or if you're considering a GHR uh, implementation, uh, hopefully you've seen some ways uh, that you can improve your system design uh, to, to, to write a, a better fit for the applications for your HR business requirements. All right, I don't know if we have any more questions, but I want to... Uh actually do. Stand here while we ask for them. <laughs> <laughs> You've come up to answer? Yes, there you go. Mm -hmm. Oh, here they are. Uh, yeah, all, all the ones that we've talked about are straight out of, well, GHR is the overviewing tool, but LTM, yes, they are modular LTM. Yeah, are, are all of the, yeah, all of the out of the box functionality that we've mentioned uh, are various modules of LTM. Yes. All right. Well, I want to thank Chip and Richard Stout for getting us through our very first webinar of the week. There are several more. If you are interested in this content, you might be interested.